Yeah, why is A nice and straightforward? It's just a substitution. Yeah, W equals what? Yeah, and why do you identify that as a nice substitution already? You've done many of these before. What's the degree of the top? What's the degree under? Yeah, it's one less of the thing under the radicand, right? So when you actually do the substitution, does it say to actually do this? No, but you could. What would it be? It would be x over the square root of w. And what's dw equal to? 2x, 2x dx. So what does dx equal? dw over 2x. So what's the magical thing that happens right now? What's that magical thing that happens? The x's go away. Is that the awesome thing you were looking for? Yeah, so you end up with w to the negative 1 half dw, right? Do you see that, everybody? You good? No. No? You don't? Oh, there's a 1 half. Sorry. There's a 1 half on the outside. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. That good? Can you integrate that for me? What's that going to be? 1 half times 2w to the, to the 1 over 2, right? But what does w equal? It's right there at the top. Uh-huh. So that goes away, and you end up with? x squared plus 10 to the plus c. If you finish the integral, that's what it would be. That's straight substitution right there. On this one, it looks structurally very similar. Radically different methodology. Radically different methodology. Raise your hand right now if you could write down the inverse trig, de the derivatives of the three primary trig, uh, inverse trig functions. Raise your hand right now if you could write down the derivatives of the three primary inverse trig functions. Okay, you need to memorize all six of them. So get on that. And two, you, well, sine, cosine, tangent, <coughs> secant, cosecant, cotangent. Know them. That's one thing you need to be able to recognize. On this one, that's not what you're going for. This is a trig substitution. What's the key operation in the denominator that really speaks to you? It's the plus. That is x squared plus 10. What's the most basic trig identity that you know? That's the most basic trig identity you know? What's the most, what is the most, yeah, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one, right? And then from that you can get two others. Divide by cosine squared and you end up with one plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared, right? Divide by sine squared and what do you get? Cotangent squared plus one is equal to cosecant squared. You can use either one, I like this one. So what you're noticing is that x squared plus 10 eh, is kind of similar to this. You want to force that to exist. In the x squared plus 10, comparing it to 1 plus tangent squared, you have something squared. Is that a 1 next to it? Is 1 the same thing as 10, everybody? So is that a 1 next to it? No, it's not. So what do you need to make in there? You need to somehow make it that you have to, well, the 10's already in there. So you want to make a 10 over here. So you want to turn x into tangent, but what happens if you just say x is equal to tangent? What happens if you just say x is equal to tangent theta? What happens? Yeah, you end up with this, tangent squared theta plus 10, and then you have to translate that. You can do dx for now. We'll translate it later. Is that nice? Not yet, because is that 10 still a 10? You want to make sure you can pull out the 10. So you go back to your substitution. And what do you add in right before the tangent? Square root of 10. The square root of 10. Now when you do the substitution, it will work. The question is not asking you to finish it, but let's finish it now and see what happens. If we make the substitution, we end up with 1 over 10 tangent squared theta plus 10, and it's the square root of that. Still dx. What can we now pull out of the square root? So you end up with 1 over the square root of 10 times the integral of 1 over the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1 dx. Do we like having dx and theta? No. Are you OK with where we are right now? Raise your hand if you're OK with where we are right now. OK. Wait, so yes. You said x equals radical OK. We don't like having dx and theta. But what does dx equal? Uh, well, x is equal to radical 10 tan theta. So what does? The square root of 10, what? What's the derivative? Don't say it. What's the derivative of tangent? What's the derivative of tangent? Say it on three. One, two, three. No. Try again. Secant squared. So you end up with secant squared d theta. So what do you end up with? One over the square root of 10, right? Times what? Root 10 secant squared d theta over. What is, ta what is tangent squared plus one? What is tangent squared plus one? 
We just show that that's equal to secant squared theta. It's the same thing. We just show, oh, that's not a highlighter. <laughs> that's one way to make it not nice. Oh, what's the square? Oh, what cancels there? What cancels? Well, hold on. Well, this cancels too, right? So what do you end up with? You end up with just what? Secant theta d theta. That's where we are right now. Are you okay with what we've done so far? Take a look. Are you okay with what we just did right now? Let me get rid of this. Uh, I'll move this. This was We did this for another problem right there. How are you with what we just did? How are you? Five, is, anybody know how to evaluate secant? Yeah. yeah. Who, who says yeah in the back? Yeah, how do you do it? One over cosine theta. So you say one over cosine theta d theta? Theta, theta? Okay, so and then, then what? I think we can use integration by parts. Is it by parts? What do we think? Uh, we can multiply both sides by cosine. Multiply both sides? Cosine over what? So you want to turn this into, okay, sure. You're saying you want to do this, cosine over? You could do that. Oh, you see what he's doing there? So yeah, the point is this, is this a trivial, is, is this trivial? Say no. It is not. I like that. That's cool. Are we done yet? <laughs> Almost done. What do we do now? Substitute. What? U equals sine theta? Yeah. U equals sine theta? Is that okay? Sure, let's see what happens. If we do that, what do we end up with? Cosine theta over what? One minus, one minus u squared. And what is du equal to? It's just cosine theta, d theta, right? Is that correct? Yeah. So if we plug that, so we had d theta before, so what does it become? What does it become? Oh, D, oh, look at that. It just becomes 1 over 1 minus u squared what? DU. DU. What about that? Oh, can we integrate that? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to do this. You can keep going. Does this, did this question require us to do any of this? No. No. What was the only thing they wanted you to identify? All they wanted you to do was identify this. But do you understand that there's a path now? We're chipping away at it. We're chipping away at it. People have asked me many times over the past five days, how do you know it's radical 10 tangent theta? Here's the key. You know you're looking at a plus here, and you have a radical around it, so you're trying to turn it into something squared. What's the trig identity we can use here where there's a plus sign? Either, either you need to use 1 plus tangent is equal to secant squared. It is possible to use that, but I don't recommend it. Yes, Ian. Sorry, you use... Um... So we know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one, right? Let's divide everything by cosine squared theta. Are we allowed to do that? So you have one plus tangent squared theta is equal to what? Secant squared theta. And then how do you get the other one? Divide by sine. I don't remember all three of them. I literally do that every single time, just to make sure I'm right. I literally go divide by, oh, they're done. Divide by, oh, there it is. Okay, let's move to, let's see. Do I want to do 27? Okay. Uh, write the integral in the form. Hold on, let me just pause this. Uh, natural fraction. Factor the. You factor the denominator, right? So that's going to be two y over. What can you factor out of the first first two terms? So that's going to be what? Y minus one plus y minus one. What 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 method is that called? Anybody know what that group that method's called? Grouping. Oh, look, said with such passion in the back. Factor by grouping. <laughs> Are we done factoring? What do you think? I think we're done factoring, right? So when we break this into a partial fraction, everybody, what are we breaking it into? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go with uh, Soma, go. Well, A-Y, right? Plus B over. Mm-hmm. Plus... So you're trying to find the A, B, and C values that make that true, right? There are a couple methods. There are a couple methods you can use at this point. There's one which I like to call the magic value number, uh, magic numbers. I like calling them magic numbers. Did anybody actually look in the book and see how they did this? Yeah. 
Yeah, so what do they do when they do, when, can someone verbally explain to me how they do this in the book? The first thing they do is they write 2y is equal to ay plus b times what? y minus 1 plus c times, right, exactly. So what do they get? 2y is equal to ay squared minus ay plus by minus b plus cy squared plus c. I just distributed, right? And then what do they do? They group, right? So uh, 2y is equal to, what are there? a plus c what? y squared. And then what are the b's here? We have uh, plus b minus a y, right? And it's a minus b, right? What, plus c minus b, like this? Is that right? So can someone tell me one, one true statement that we know? What's a plus c equal to? Zero. Zero. What's b minus a have to equal? Two. Two. And what does c minus b have to be? Zero. C minus b has to be what? One? Zero. Zero, right? How many equations do we have? Three. How many variables do we have? Three, right. So how do we go about solving this? A bunch of different ways. Anybody want to take a stab at it? What do we do first? Oh, so what? We know C equals B in this one, right? That's what this tells us right there? Nice. And we also know, so then what? What'd you say? Oh, yeah, where can we plug it in now? Woo, right there, right? So what does that tell us? C minus A is what? And A plus C is zero. What can we do to those two things? Add them together, and what do you get? 2C equals 2, so C equals what? One, so therefore a is equal to negative one, so b is equal to one. So you get the three values right there. That's where they come from. Is that algebra pretty annoying? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they limit it to linear terms. <laughs> they limit it to linear terms, so you don't have to do that deep of an algebra. The other way you can do this, and this is this is I I, I will allow you to do this method. I'll allow you to do this method. If you multiply out the denominators here, uh, you end up with what two y. Let's just write it again here. What was it? a y plus b times what? y minus 1 and then plus c what? y squared plus 1. Is everybody with me so far? What happens if y is equal to 1? Plug in 1 for y. What happens? What do you get? 2 equals what? c times what? <laughs> 2. What does c equal? 1. <laughs> right? Does everybody see that right there? Is that a quick way to get one of the numbers? You can use these magic numbers, and sometimes there are enough of them that you can get all of them that way. You can get all of them that way. The challenge here is you can't plug in something to get rid of C, so you actually have to do some of the work out here. Don't worry about it too much. Let's look at 6. This was one more to do here. Sorry, Go ahead. Yes. So the grouping part, yes. I'm, I just, I'm, I don't... So for example, I could say, here's a particle A. It is governed by this set of equations right here. The x-coordinate of the particle will be 2t. The y-coordinate of the particle will be 2t. At time t, what are the x and y coordinates? Well, at time 0, what's the x-coordinate? What's the y-coordinate? 1, 2, 2. 2, 4, 4. Could you plot those points? Yeah, that's the point. 0, 0, 2, 2, and what? 4, 4. What do those look like? 0, 0. Oh, it looks like this, right? This is just a one of the many parameterizations for what's the line, do you think? What line is that? Y equals? Oh, it's Y equals X. How many different ways could you drive on a road? If it's saying on the road. Yeah, Y infinite. How many different, why is it an infinite number of ways to drive on that road, Chip? Chip, yeah? When you're driving a car, what changes? The speed. So how many different ways could you drive on a road? Why? Because you could be... Yeah, you could be speeding up and slowing down and going backwards and forwards. Could you still be on the same road? There's lots of different ways to drive on a road. Do you agree with that? How many different ways do you think we could write the equation of a line parametrically? Infinite. How about x equals 3t and y equals 3t? Is that the same path? What's the only thing that changed? Speed. The speed, exactly. So will there be infinite parametrizations for any path? Absolutely, absolutely. 
Ah, the time, exactly, exactly. Okay, so let's say we looked at this one. Describe the motion of a particle whose coordinates at time t are those two things. If you are totally lost and you don't have any other tools, I've given you no tools yet, right? For parametric, you can always make a what if you're graphing something? A make a table. In this case, how many columns do we have, Ian? Three. Three. T, X, and Y. What's a good time to start at? Zero is a common time. Do you notice how it doesn't call it time? It just says, oh, it does say time on this one. It's not always going to be t, just index. What's cosine of zero? One. one. What's sine of zero? zero? So our point is one, zero. What's the next t value I should choose if I'm just choosing t values? Pi over six. We could do pi over six. What's cosine of pi over six? Three. Or three over two. And what's sine of pi over six? One half. One half. How about then pi over? Four, root two over two. Oh, you could do pi over three, sure. Well, I'll do pi over four first. Root two over two and root two over? Two. So you get the picture. Why am I choosing these trig values? Oh, can we evaluate them nicely? I'm just jumping here. What's, what's cosine of pi over two? And what's sine? If you graph these points, you end up with something like this. So what do you think we're actually tracing out? A circle. What type of circle? Centered around zero, radius of? One. What, what's that called? The Ah, what direction is this going in? Uh, Counterclockwise. Where did it start? One zero. So at, at time zero, it's at one zero. It's a unit circle. Are there lots of other ways to write the unit circle just by changing the speed? Absolutely. Now, plotting points is pretty good. You have, do you believe that it's a unit circle? Let's turn it into the Cartesian. What I mean by that is, see that equation right there? If I square both sides, what do I get, Wiley? X squared equals cosine squared Yeah. If I square this one, what do I get? Y squared equals sine squared Can I add equations together? Yeah. X squared plus Y squared would be what? Cosine squared T plus what? Sine squared, sine squared T equals what? One. So is this the path that the particle is following? Yeah. Uh-huh. We have unparameterized it. We just got the path. We just took away the, any judgment of speed or evaluation of speed. We just proved that it is that circle. Now, could you go a different way around the circle? Mm -hmm. Could we change how fast we're going? How would we change how fast we're going? What would we change in the parameterization? Yeah, change it to 2t and 2t, or 3t and 3t, or what? Half of t or in half of t, right? Ah, do the t's have to be the same? Do they? They do, because what identity did we use right here? They have to be what? The same, right? As long as they're the same, it adds together to get one. If they're different, does the identity work? No. So if they were different, what would happen to this path? It would warp. Something would maybe be an oval. Mm, we gotta be careful, right? Okay, so that's part of it. We could be given a function. We also be given a table in the form of a graph. Hey, if I ask you, what does this look like? If x is this function and y is that function, I could ask you what this looks like. What do you make if you're going to make if you're going to draw the graph? Make a table. Make me a table of five points. Make me a table right here. What are the three columns on your table? T what? T x and y. Give me the first five points. Fill that in by yourself right now. Chart looks something like that. Something like that. So then when you plot them out, so if we wanted to find the slope of this line right here, what's the slope going to be equal to? 5 minus over negative 1 minus 2. So what's that? 6 over negative 3. Is that right? 5 minus and then negative 1 minus 2? So what's the slope? Negative 2. So you know that that's the slope of the line. Now, does it say what your, quote, starting point needs to be? Does it say? No, nope, it doesn't. So what do we get to pick? Any point. Do we have two points already up there? So don't be obnoxious and make up some terrible point, right? <laughs> pick one of them. Which point do you want to pick, class? First one or the second one? First one. So what's our x naught value going to be, Chip? Two. two. And what's our y naught value going to be? Negative one. So when we write this equation, we know x is equal to x naught plus a times t 
and y is equal to y naught plus b times t, where the slope is equal to b over a. What b value do you want to use, Chip? We have choices. What b value do you want to use? If this is the slope, what b value do you want to use? Sure. And what's the a value going to be? Yeah. So can we write in the parametric equation of this line? Yeah, what do we get? x is equal to 2 plus what? We, yeah, we said it was going to be 1, right? And what's y going to be? Minus 2 what? 2t. Two t. It was totally dependent on two choices. What point we're using and what ratio we're using. Now, here's the thing. The, what's the ratio of b to a right here? Negative, it's negative 2, right? Negative 2 because it's, it's, what, it's negative 2 to 1, right? Could we change it to negative 6 over 3? Sure. Is it the same line? Yeah, yeah. All we were asked to do in this is describe the path. Did it say anything about the speed? No. What's the difference here, though, when it says the line segment from negative 2, 1 to negative 1, 5? That is telling you to do something very specific. Start here and what? End there. So what are you going to have to limit? The t, right? Depending on what function you came up with. If we use this right here, does this start in the right place, actually? No. Yeah. Starts at 2, negative 1 when t is equal to 0. OK, though. If we wanted to end right there, though, at negative 1, 5, what do we need to go from? 0 to what? 2 needs to turn into what? Negative 1. Negative 1. And negative 1 turns in, needs to turn into what? What? 5. So we're going to go from 0 to what? Three. 0 to 3? Careful. 0 to negative 3. The way we wrote that line, the reason I don't like using time is because it infers that you can't go backwards. Well, in many circumstances when we're doing word problems, you could. Like, how long ago was it that? You can answer that. That's the kind of negative time we're talking about. Why does it have to be negative 3? Well, it has to be 2 minus what? 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus negative 6 is what? 5. Does everybody see that right there? So to write the line segment, what do you have to have? 0 to negative 3. It all depends on how you wrote the original equation. It all depends on how you wrote the original equation. Everybody stand up and find a part of the board. I know this is how you to start at this point. So that's t equals 0. And I want that point to be t equals 1. Write me the parameterization that lets that happen. Write me the parameterization so that at t equals 0, it's at negative 1, 5. And at t equals 1, it's at 2, negative 1. Do that right now. Go. It's x naught. And what's y naught? 5. And you're adding it something to it so that it's something t, right? Right? Yeah. And when you plug in 1, you know you need to get out a 2. And when you plug in 1, you need to get out a negative 1. What do you subtract from 5 to get negative 1? 6. 6. OK. So if you want to subtract 6, what does the coefficient here need to be? Um, when t equals 1. Well, if you want a velocity vector, you need to find dx dt. Wiley, can you tell me what dx dt is on this one? What is dx dt? I'll zoom in. 2 plus dt. Yeah. 2 plus e to the t. Uh, Chip, what's dy dt? Nice. So what is the velocity vector? Uh, it's square root. Well, the velocity vector. So 2 plus, two plus e. to the t comma 3. That's the velocity vector, everybody. Remember vectors? Are we OK with that? I haven't taken physics. You guys are the ones that are my chaperone, OK? Now, we know that speed is equal to the what of velocity? Magnitude. Say magnitude. So it's the magnitude of that. So it's the magnitude of this thing, right? How do you find the magnitude of that? Square root of what? 2 plus e to the t squared plus 3 squared. There it is. That's the speed at any time. Done. That's it. There's no trick to it. Parametric land can help you a lot. Yay. Especially when the derivatives are that nice. OK, the last thing. Well, you guys can do. 
tangent lines. You guys are okay with tangent lines? How do you feel about tangent lines? You good with tangent lines? Yeah. The only thing you need to remember for tangent lines is this. Do you remember what dy dx equals when you have x is equal to like x of t and y is equal to y of t? Do you remember this? dy dt over dx dt. Do you remember that? If you don't, now you do. If you want to find dy dt, dy dx, what do you do? Derivative of y with respect to t divided by derivative of x with respect to t. That's it. Super straightforward. It gets a little bit more fun uh, when we talk about these, though, right here. OK, so the slope of a curve, that's what I just told you right now, is dy dx, which is dy dt over dx dt. What does this mean right here? What is this asking you right here? What is this telling you, not asking? The first one right here, dy dx. And remember, what was dy dx? What was that defined as? dy what? dt over dx dt. And then once you find that, what do you take of that? d dt, the derivative with respect to t. And then what do you divide it by? dx dt. Where this comes from, I'm OK with you not understanding yet why, but I need you to understand. Do you understand the operational order there? Yeah. Don't just do the derivative of y with respect to t twice. You have to do it this way. Let me show you how it plays out. Let me show you how it plays out. Uh, i got to find it here. Um, do, 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 do. What the derivative with respect to t of that is? Negative 4 over 3. Negative 4 over 3 t to the? So that's d dt of dy dx. Remember, it was d dt of dy dx. But then what do you divide by? x dx dt. dx dt, doing the second derivative. So you go back to here and you say, oh, what is dx dt? 3t what? So if we want this, it's going to be negative 4 thirds t to the negative 3 over what? <coughs> Over what? Three, thank you for my 3t squared. Can we simplify that? Negative 4 what? 9t to the? Negative oh, 5. See, that's why you guys are here. I need a chaperone. That would be the second derivative of y with respect to x. Yay. Oh, yay? We good with that? So let's, let's look at that square one more time. Take a look at that. Oh, it's super cool. Super, super cool. It's super helpful because it keeps it in form of t. We'll go back and talk about where that comes from, where that comes from comes soon, okay? But what I need you to understand now is how to use it. Are you okay with using it? Does the second derivative in parametric line tell you the same stuff? Mm -hmm. What's it tell you about? Concavity. 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 Okay, that's a lot for today. Thank you for suffering through it. Haha, <laughs> it's not suffering, Mr. Seaman. It's so much fun. I got, well, I got two smiles from the front row here. <laughs> two smiles. Get out of here.